Welcome into this week's Coyote Net Report. I'm with Coach Leanne Williamson, fresh off the uh, Summer League Tournament where the South Dakota Coyotes defeated Denver in five sets in the Summer League Tournament Championships to secure the NCAA Tournament. But just recap the whole weekend, starting on Thursday with obviously the announcement of Haley, the, the All League announcements with Haley Dots as being named Player of the Player of the Year and Ann Rasmussen Player of the Year and Taylor Wilson and Madison Jurgens also being. I mean, obviously, it was a great. It was a great start to the Commerce Tournament weekend. Yeah, I mean I, that um, that awards banquet's always kind of fun. You get to uh, girls get to dress up. Uh, you know, we get to go and sit with all the other teams, have a nice dinner, um, and then to be able to have some of our players recognized just kind of made it even better. Um, <clears throat> you know, both Madison and, and Taylor on the all league team. I mean, I, I think that um, you know both of them have earned that uh, to their in their own ways. Um, Taylor's been extremely steady for us all year, um, and then Madison just grew as the year went on um, day by day match by match and she's a very different player from the beginning to the end so to see coaches recognize that as well was was pretty cool for us and then you know Annie being defensive player of the year uh, we thought last year she had a good shot at it. Uh, the player who won it did, I mean, did have a fantastic year too. So I think she was she was really focused this off season to make some of those changes and, and put herself in that position again. But um, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that she was the best defensive player in the league. So again, to have the other coaches recognize that um, was was a great accomplishment for her. Uh, and then Haley, I mean, player of the year. I mean, I, you just can't say enough about her. Um, you know, and I think what makes her even better is just her story. You know, she came in as a walk-on, um, you know, wasn't promised any money. And then as the as the years went by, um, she did get on scholarship for a couple years. But um, coming as a walk-on, she's been playing since her freshman year, um, has made a big impact on the team in, in every year in some way. And I think every year her uh, the expectations for her grew, her expectations for herself grew, uh, and she's just such a competitor. So to see all that hard work pay off and somebody who has really bought into uh, Kyo Volleyball and the program and doing things the right way. Um, just extremely happy for her efforts to be rewarded in that way. And the Cows had the number two seed heading into the Cows tournament and got to sit back on Friday and watch uh, North Dakota State uh, knock off Omaha and then having to play a team we just played five days earlier. What was the challenge in that? Well, you know, I think... Uh, North Dakota State, we had beaten them actually pretty handily at our place on that previous Sunday. Uh, so, you know, I think our concern as coaches was that we would, that our team might overlook them a little bit. But um, I thought they did a pretty good job of staying <clears throat> really focused during that match. Uh, North Dakota State was definitely playing a lot better. Um, I mean, I think their defense, they made some really big plays that they hadn't made the week before. Offensively, a couple of them were able to go off in, in certain sets. Um, you know, uh, Alexis Bachmeyer had a really good match against us, and we had a hard time slowing her down. Um, so, I mean, they challenged us in, in ways that we knew that we were going to be challenged on Sunday if we were lucky enough to get to that point. So um, I was happy with the way our team responded with that um, and the way that we were able to move forward, obviously, through that match and into Sunday. Uh, in, in the North Coast State match, five individuals with more than six kills led by Haley Dotson with 14, Taylor Wilson with 13, Elizabeth Lotion with 13, uh, Christina Susak with 8, and Claire Gertis with 6, Madison 44 assists, with, and Annie, and another four kids, kids again in double figures with, in digs defensively. Um, the challenge, though, in that fourth set to not let it go to five, obviously that had to be a huge confidence boost or a huge boost going into Sunday. Absolutely. I mean, I think we were down 21-18 at one point in time, um, and it could have been very easy to sit back and um, allow them to take that that set. And um, and actually, at that last time out, we just said, like, this is where we're going to find out what we're made of. And our team responded extremely well to that. Uh, you saw our fight come back um, to just a whole other level, to be completely honest, and um, made some really big plays. I mean, it, a lot of times it starts with one big defensive play, and uh, I think that stayed pretty true for us all year. Um, um, so to see us be able to do that down the stretch in a very important match for us and be able to pull out that win, uh, w it was huge. I'm not quite sure which set it was in, but I think Mehana made a play where she like ran into the into the mm -hmm. bench to save a ball um, yeah. and save a rally. I mean, and so I mean, Dots Haley had 17 digs, and Mehana was in double figures in both matches, and so was Lolo in double figures in both matches. And then heading into Sunday. Um, you, you had taken Denver to five on their place the previous time, kind of felt like you maybe let, some, let one slip away, and yet here you were back again in another, in another five-set match again in this time. 
Yeah, you know, I, it's crazy the evolution of a season. Um, you know, you start back in August, and you know, you're you talk so much about taking it one day at a time. But um, you know, realistically, we all know what we're working for. We all know what we're trying to get to, and that really is to put ourselves in a position to be in that championship match. And um, you know, being against Denver again, um, having lost to them the previous two times, it is hard to beat a team three times in one season. Um, but I do think this team as a whole, I've been saying it all year um, they just they grind when things don't go their way you know and we have had losses they get better um, in those in those next couple of weeks in that next match and um, they're just so willing to take those learning moments and get better from them and I, I think you really saw that again versus Denver on Sunday um, of the previous two times you know the first time we played them they swept us on our home floor second time we played them we lost in five on their home floor um, but really good experiences for both and learning moments in both. And then I think you saw that kind of come full circle. And on Sunday, we were able to make some of those changes that we needed to um, and really, I think, get better um, because of the experiences that we had had in the past. And in Sunday's championship match, Taylor Wilson, I mean, what more can you say? 24 kills, only one error in 45 attempts for a 5'11 hitting percentage. And obviously, Taylor was named tournament MVP. And joining Taylor on the all-tournament team was Haley Dotsith, who had 19 kills in the championship match. And Madison Jurgens. I mean, Madison had 50 assists, but I think the number that jumps out to me is that 20 in that dig column for Madison. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, first Madison, I mean, I, I think, you know... I said it earlier, but she has just improved so much through this season. And I think even just her confidence level, she's just a winner. She knows how to compete. She knows how to put people in positions to have success. Um, and she's going to work her butt off in order to put our players in the best position. And, I mean, there's one play, um, one rally down the stretch in the fifth set. I think it was maybe at point thirteen for us. Um, and I think she made, like, three digs in a row, and they were not easy digs. They were hard digs. Um, and she just kept the play alive you know each time and um, that was really kind of just that the icing on the cake of like hey like this is going to happen because of the fact that we were playing at such a high level at that point um, so she definitely deserved that um, you know Haley has been just a go-to for us in so many situations you know for her to have 14 kills and on Saturday and then follow it up with 19 kills. Um, you know, I think she probably had a few more errors than she would have liked, but you're going to have that when you're playing against the, you know, one of the best teams in the conference. So, um, you know, she handled herself really well, had a couple really big dig um, plays as well, um, and just was a steady leader for us really the entire tournament. And then Taylor, I mean, it, you, <laughs> We kind of still sit back and laugh sometimes. We look at her stats because it's just insane at, as to what she has done um, in her position and, and on on this team. Um, you know, all weekend she actually wasn't feeling well. So for her to put up these numbers and actually be sick in those two matches, I, I think is just absolutely incredible. But she was on a mission. She knew what she wanted to do. She knew what she wanted to help the team do, um, and she absolutely did everything in her power to help us get to that point. And backing up Taylor and Haley was Elizabeth Lotion in double figures, both matches herself with 12 kills. Christina was seven. And defensively, five in double figures in the in the championship match. Like I said, Mehana and Lelo both in double figures in both matches. Haley both in double, and, and then Annie. I mean, defensively, obviously, I think what were some of the adjustments? Dropping set two, obviously, when you had the lead, probably had to be a little bit of a, a heart wrencher, but we obviously learned from that and, and push forward by winning set four and, and obviously controlling set five. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think set two was a letdown for us, um, for sure. And I think it actually probably fueled us a little bit. And you, I don't think you would say that just looking at the third set. But, um, you know, to start the third set, we were up 7-1. Um, so we definitely started really strong. They went on one really big run, just couldn't put the ball away during that time, which made it really difficult. But, um, you know, I, I think that the defensive efforts of our team has just been absolutely incredible. And, you know, you look at the stats, and stats don't tell the entire story. But um, everybody had a part in this. You know, everybody um, did their job to the highest level that they could, and that's why we were able to pull away with a win. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do that without everybody being on the same page. So, um, you know, stats tell a story to us, and it's probably a little bit of a different story than it tells to um, everybody else. But, I mean, this 100% was a team win. And you talk about as one as your team model and, and next man up, and I, I look at Emily uh, Grathoff as, a, as an example. I mean, she 
didn't play early in the match, but came in after Claire struggled a little bit and, and really came up with some big plays there in the fourth and fifth set. Yeah, she had a huge block for us at one point. Um, you know, I think that was the, the change that we felt like we could make. You know, a lot of times Claire offensively usually does a, um, a little bit, she's a little bit more dynamic in that area. Um, Emily tends to be more of that defensive middle for us. And at the time, their middles were just doing really, really well. They were going off. So we felt like maybe we could get a switch. Maybe we could get a block here and there. Um, and Emily only had one block in that time, but that block ended up being huge for us. So, um, you know, I, I think that it is, it's it, it's always going to be a total team effort, but um, this team has really bought into that and has worked together, um, maybe the best that I've ever seen. And the Coyotes at 21-9 and nine overall this season, uh, first ever NCAA tournament berth uh, in, in the short t time span that's been Division One. I. I mean, you've been here for pretty much all of it. What, is, what does it mean? It's incredible. I, uh, you know, I, I still think that it hasn't fully sunk in to a lot of us, uh, me included. Uh, I mean, the moment was amazing. Um, I, I think for the players, I think maybe it's a little bit more real for them. But when you're not on the floor, it's hard to fully grasp that. But as a bystander, I mean, you you, you set yourself up to constantly just worry about that one point, that one point. Um, so when that final point hit, you're almost not fully prepared for what that means. And, um, you know, it, it's something that I don't think anyone will easily forget. Um, I think it'll stay with us uh, for a long time. But, I mean, that's huge for not only this team but for the program um, you now have you know if you look towards the future which we don't want to yet but um, you now have three t three classes behind the senior class that have been a part of this that have been a part of a, um, a conference championship and an NCAA berth and with that you have three classes that know what they're fighting for every every year um, and I think that changes things it's the same thing when we won um, the regular season a couple years ago I think it changed the level of focus at times because they knew what they were fighting for. They knew what they were trying to um, to get to, that feeling, that, um, you know, that pride. And uh, I, I think for the program, this is just going to be incredibly important for us. And final thoughts on just having to go to Denver and beating Denver on their home floor, which is not a, a no, is rare accomplishment for assembly team. And then the support from the, from the parents and the fans you had. Yeah, I mean, I actually don't love playing in Denver usually, but, um, you know, I, I think that, again, our experiences have set us up to be able to have success. But, um, you know, this team was just very focused going out, and we did have a very good uh, fan section that came out. We had parents, we had relatives, we had friends of, of family. We had um, we had a good section out there that was wearing red and, and cheering for the Yotes, and um, it, it does make a difference. Whether people want to say it does or doesn't, um, they were able able to I think support our players in that in that way and that does make a really big difference for us so um, you know being able to to get our first NCAA berth um, is huge being able to do it you know on Denver's floor against Denver um, might make it just a little bit better but um, in the end you know it's really about us and, and what we are able to accomplish is pretty amazing and again the NCAA selection show is coming up on Sunday and uh, stay tuned to GoYotes.com for more information on uh, more volleyball stuff coming up uh, this week.